to everyone on this lovely evening. Uh, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and give you peace is my prayer. You've tuned in uh, to virtual Bible class. Amen. At the Jehovah Shammah Apostolic Faith Church. Thanking God for uh, each one that is on live tonight, uh, thinking of not robbery to come and to hear and to consider uh, what is being said as we all do our best to uh, get through these turbulent times and get through these uh, times of, of, of craziness and such, but we're believing that God is going uh, to bless us in spite of. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to ask everybody, if you will, share this 
tonight. Uh, share this. Start you a watch party. Come on, Jehovah Shammah, help us out tonight. Start you a watch party and um, and share this word uh, as we go forth. Let's share this uh, with all those that we know. Amen. That the Lord might be glorified and magnified as we go into the word uh, of God on tonight. I'm so happy to continue on with uh, talking about unity. And let me just go ahead and say that uh, the Lord won't let me let it go. And so uh, we're going to continue on with this even through um, even through the month of uh, April. We're going to continue on with uh, talking about unity. Amen. I think that is so fitting and I think that is necessary for where we are now um, as the body of Christ, as the church, as the world, as everything. I think that is necessary that um, uh, we take into consideration that God wants us to be unified, to get stuff under control. God holds everything in his hands, but he has given it to the saints of God um, to pray and to fast and to seek his face. I believe and I'm a firm believer that the only thing holding up this world right now is the people of God praying from everywhere. All right. So go ahead and do that. And uh, got myself set up here. If you can hear me good, if you can see me good, please let me know. I always like to know. Uh, make sure that we're clear. Make sure that our audio is clear. Let me know what you see. And uh, if it's bad, then we'll go ahead and get things rectified. But in the meantime, and in between time, let's go ahead and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you tonight. Thank you for this medium. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to use this apparatus to share a word with your people. I pray that our time tonight together is relevant. I pray, oh God, that we might receive our marching orders, our inspiration, our delegation, which you have given to us, uh, this mandate that you have given to us to minister to your people, Lord God. I pray that it will not fall on deaf ears, but I pray that it will be bread to the hearer, Lord God, that it would be meat to our meat to our bones. Lord God, that we may do what you are calling for us to do. All these things I ask in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his name's sake. Amen. All right. Heaven smile upon you, all those that are listening. Let's go to the word of the Lord. I've been sharing again uh, on unity for the past month now. All right. Month today. Been sharing on unity. And um, I, I, I've been sharing and saying that uh, where we are now, it's so amazing that God would give this to us to share, uh, not just with our local church, but to share with all those that would hear our voice. Uh, we were given this theme to share from and to speak from and to teach from. And now how how fitting it is. Y'all excuse my little whistle allergies. I don't have COVID-19. I got uh, allergies 2020. All right. Um, but, but how God has given us this mandate to share this word uh, in particular with his people um, as we are in these turbulent times, I think that is so necessary that we need to be unified. Uh, I've been sharing with our local church that um, it is not it is not just by happenstance the fact that they are now asking us to be compassionate to one another and asking us, uh, thank God, to be considerate of one another. And these are things that we should have been doing the whole time. Amen. These are things that we should have been doing the whole time. But but unfortunately, it takes reminders like this to show us and to 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 get us prepared for what God uh, would have for us as we go forward. So I think that the church should be the the microcosm of what unification is. Now, um, I'm going to stick with my notes prayerfully. I know how I do stick with my notes, but I get kind of far off. I want to go back to um, what we talked about last week, kind of a part two about the unity uh, that Jesus desires. The unity that Jesus desires. Let's go back to the book of St. John for our foundation. St. John chapter number 17. 
back in the book of St. John, chapter number 17. Uh, a couple of tips, a couple of tidbits from our last session together. Uh, I begin to share with you how the Lord's Prayer, um, the real Lord's Prayer, rather, is found in St. John, chapter number 17. Now, again, I don't mean to bust up your theology. I just mean to give you some knowledge and some understanding that, that uh, our Father, uh, which art in heaven, that is not the Lord's Prayer. Amen. That is not, that's what they titled it, but that is not the Lord's prayer. That is what the Lord gave to the disciples, a manner or a mode or a skeleton or a synopsis on how to pray. But Jesus's prayer is found in the book of St. John chapter number 17, and specifically it's found in verse number uh, 21. And Jesus's prayer, the, 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 the unity that Jesus desires in St. John chapter number 17, verse 21 says that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. St. John 17, 22, it says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. The unity that Jesus desired for the apostles, for the disciples who became the apostles, which means the sent ones, the ones sent out that, that came to us, those who believe on Jesus through their word, is that we may be one, okay? Not just one in how we do, but having one mind. It is a it is it is a, a awesome thing when you get people to have one mind operating from one mode, operating from one purpose. Now, does unity mean that we're always going to agree? Absolutely not. It would be foolish of me and ignorant of me to to try to parrot a narrative that unity means that we always agree. We will not always agree to the same point. But we will always agree to the same purpose. I've used so many analogies uh, as it relates to what unity is. And, and the, the one thing that I know that the Lord gave me was that unity means that I might not agree to the same point. But we always agree to the same purpose. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for that married couple that's squabbling and quabbling all the time. And you can't find a common ground. That, let, let me go ahead. That's what the word compromise means, okay? Compromise, to, to co-promise, which means I give a little bit. And you give a little bit, compromise, co-promise. I, I promise that I'm going to help you and you promise that you're going to help me. This is how unity works, that we might get the end-all, be-all goal so that we might finish to a purpose where, where God can be glorified ultimately, okay? So as I go deeper into this, I want to, um, I want to uh, again, highlight St. John 17, 21, 22. This is the unity that Jesus desires. But I want to show you some of the uh, benefits that come along with being unified. Go to the book of Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number two, and for those of us who are apostolic Pentecostal or those of us who are learning uh, about what it is or uh, who have experienced the power of God as it relates to the infilling of the Holy Spirit, uh, this is our chapter. But there is more to the book of Acts <laughs> than chapter number two. However, Jesus by this time has sent out the apostles. He has gone off of the scene. He has gone away. He has now ascended to the Father, sitting on the right hand of the Father, according to the book of Romans, chapter number one, and he is making intercession for us. Jesus has gone away. He has given his commandments, uh, given his disciples a commandment to go to Jerusalem until you are endued or endowed, until you are bequeathed, until you are given, until you are empowered with power from on high. Now, the unified mind as it relates to Pentecost is the fact that God has put one language back in the earth. 
Okay, that's the power of Pentecost all by itself. The fact that God put one language back in the earth. We remember, some may remember, if you read in the book of Genesis, there were a group of men who said, we're going to build a tower that's going to reach up to heaven so that we might be like God. And God sees their purpose and he sees the, the intent uh, of their evil heart. Let me help you understand something real quick. You can be unified, but if your intentions are not correct, you are unified for the wrong purpose. All right. You have to make sure that your intentionality is correct. You don't want anybody doing anything for you that you have to hear about later. I would rather do it for myself or go without if I have to hear uh, intentions go a long way. Amen. And when we talk about unity and the unity that Jesus desires, we are talking about it from a standpoint of having good intentionality. All right. Having a, a, a good mindset. That's why the mind being unified in your mind is really the key thing, because anybody can do anything out of uh, routine or they can do anything out of just the sake of doing it. But I don't want to do anything and not have my mind connected to it. You know, you know where your heart even with, uh, for my cooks, how many cooks and bakers we got out there. You have eaten food before that you can tell was cooked with love. They talk about how you cook with love. You can tell some intentionality, some effort went into it. And it should be our desire to never give God anything that costs us nothing. All right. Never give God anything that costs us nothing. So um, uh, the book of Acts chapter number two, Acts two, and we want verse number 42 in particular. Acts 2 and 42 uh, in particular, and it says this, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Look at verse number 44 of Acts chapter number 2. It says, and all that believed were together and had all things common. They were together. They weren't just together. They weren't just grouped together. They were together and they had all things common. They weren't just there for the sake of saying, I'm here. This is this is why sometimes unity can't flow because everybody doesn't have the same mindset to want to be there. Why in the world would you wake up on a Sunday morning? Go through the rigmarole of putting on your clothes and putting on your makeup and putting on your foundation and getting your suit out and getting your shoes out just to come to a place for two and a half hours and not be engaged. This is one of the areas where the enemy fights us most as it relates to unity and the working of miracles because in order for miracles to flow, there must be one mind of people. Well, what is that mind? The mind is that if my brother's getting blessed, I rejoice with my brother. If my sister's getting blessed, I rejoice with my sister. If there's a need that is going on, if there's a need in the house, I put my agenda, I put my way to the side, and I put my my focus and my mind on my brother or my sister. That's why the scripture says preferring one another. To prefer somebody else doesn't mean that, that what you have or what you're doing is not important. It just means that you don't make yourself the center of attention to where you can't pray or where you can't intercede for somebody else. All right. So so it lets us know they continued in the apostles doctrine. They had all things common. Wasn't no big eyes, wasn't no little U's, wasn't somebody here uh, uh, saying I'm the chair and I'm the head and you're under me and you're underneath me. There was nothing. All of them had everything common. And until we get to that place where we understand that no one person is more important than anybody else, God help us forget all of our importances for a while. 
And if there is a time ever now that we see, <laughs> if there is a time ever now uh, that we see and that we understand that God really is trying to get our attention, that time really is right now. Right now, ain't no pastor's aid chairperson. Right now, ain't no choir board president. Right now, ain't no usher board president. Right now, ain't no Sunday school superintendent. Everything is on hold, which is why I believe that God is giving Giving us even more spiritual vigor. Uh, I don't know if you feel it in the atmosphere. Uh, I, I, I believe that we've tapped into it here at Jehovah Shammah Church. Those of us who have have been meeting, but but there is a there is a spirit of prayer. Hallelujah. There is a spirit of prayer, a spirit of intercession that has literally overtaken us. Uh, there's a spirit of prayer that has literally grabbed me by my neck, forcing me down into prayer. Because now, even though uh, a lot of things in the world have shut down, a lot of things in the church have shut down as well. And now we don't have the distraction of trying to do this and committees and clubs and auxiliaries and stuff. Now we are all forced just to praise and just to worship with no distractions. I hope that you're catching what I'm saying. And 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 I think I think that that you know you can look at the glass half full or look at the glass half empty. You didn't even realize that you had it in you to be able to even worship God in your house or to pray in your house. I shared with the saints on this past Sunday that God has forced us to build an altar in our homes. God has literally forced us to build an altar where we are because the church doors are closed. We're not able to get in. We're not able to, 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 to be here. And now all of us even coming together online are coming together with one mind. And we're even seeing miracle. We had a sister in our church. I'm not going to get too lost. I'm not going to steal her thunder. But we had a sister in our church, even through all this calamity, just moved into a brand spanking new house, just got a brand new car. We, we had a, a, a young man who, who, who gave his tithe on Sunday and, and got word the very next day, bless God, that, that his job uh, was laying off workers. Uh, but and, and when I saw what, what his mother had put out, I said, Lord, I rebuke this. He just sold into your house on yesterday. A few moments later, he gets a text that he is counted as an essential employee and for him to report. Let me help you understand something. When you get unified in the spirit of God, you can begin shifting things by the words of your mouth. Hallelujah. If we can all speak the same thing, if we can all mind the same thing, God will send miracles. And this is what is attributed to the miracles that the apostles were able to do. All right. They had all things common. We're in Acts 2, 44. They had all things common. Look at what they did in verse number 45. And sold their possessions and good, goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They parted it to every man as every man had need. Unity in this sense meant that nobody went without. If you had bread and I had peanut butter, we all ate. If you had the chicken and I had the grease, we all ate. We must all get back to a place, beloved, where if we are going to be unified for the things of God, we got to have one another's back. We got to make sure that one another is good. There is no, nobody gets left behind. Glory to God. Nobody gets left behind. Nobody gets stuck. Nobody gets left out. Unity in the house of God means that everybody gets a piece. Everybody gets a piece. And I know that's hard. Uh, some of us, you know, some of y'all got nice stuff and you don't want nobody riding in your car. And I just got in my car and I don't want nobody doing nothing in my car. No, wait a minute. Well, you, was, you were more humble when you was taking the bus. <laughs> don't get so blessed that you forget that God has the ability and God has the authority to rescind some stuff that he gave you if it brings you to a place of distraction. Amen. All right. Verse number 46. Look at verse number 46. I love I love this particular verse. Verse number 46. It says, and they continuing daily with one accord, not five, not 12, not 27. They continuing daily with one accord 
in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness. Look at this and singleness of heart. They ate their meat with gladness and with singleness of heart. I don't really know what food has to do with, with being unified, but it's something about food and fellowship and coming together. It's something about sitting down and eating together, even in our own families right now. You, you very rarely, <laughs> you very, very rarely even have a dining room anymore. You know, you see people eat now and they eat, they got the fork in one hand and got a phone in the other hand and you can't even hardly say anything to them because you're distracting them. That's not unity. I believe that that's one of the reasons why the enemy has really come in and destroyed families because nobody's unified anymore. Nobody talks to one another. Nobody breaks bread with one another anymore. There was a time when I was coming up, we would go to one another's house and, and you know, uh, uh, we would sit down and, and get you some chicken wings and some chip and dip and tell the story how you got over. And I believe that, that those fellowships, those house fellowships much like much like the time that we're in right now that's how the early church was built the early church was built from house to house how they would meet how they would come together how they would share how they would leave and wasn't nobody hating nobody and, and they would eat and they would be unified and wasn't nobody picking up the phone and, and talking about how you said did you see what she did how to there was none of that if we can get back to that's the unity that Jesus desires where we have one mind one thing coming out of us where we are in camaraderie with one another. Let me help you understand something real quick. I know that we have a, a word in church that we love to use, and that word is messy. You know, such and such, they so messy. They they just messy. I don't like dealing with them because they, they messy this and they messy that. And the Bible lets us know that we need to mark them that cause divisions. But beloved, don't get it twisted. Don't allow yourself to get so frustrated with people that you cut everybody off. Do you understand me? Don't allow yourself to get so aggravated that you don't want to, to deal with anybody. And I know people who are like that. They don't want to they don't want to be unified because they had some bad experiences. We cannot allow our bad experiences to keep us from what Jesus desired. Anytime you have anything positive, messiness is going to be in the middle somewhere. It is up to those that have watched this pure intentions and a pure heart to help keep that thing pure. The Bible says it like this. Unto the pure, all things are pure. I don't worry about people who are messy. People who are messy don't hinder me. Because after a while, one or two things will happen. They will either weed themselves out or God will move them out the way. Do I have any witnesses? Let me go ahead and like that myself. But, but messy people don't bother. God will do one or two things. He'll either weed, they'll either weed themselves out or they will find themselves in a place where they cannot come back, where they cannot show up. And I've seen God, I've seen God do that in our ministry, where he has literally weeded messy people out so that the purity and that the flow of the unity can keep on going. Now, there's something I want to pick apart here. Stay in Acts. I want to pick this piece apart right here. Acts chapter number uh, two, verse number 47. Look at what it says. First of all, uh, for, my, for my grammar people, I'm a man of grammar. I love grammar. For my grammar individuals, if you notice in verse number 46, after singleness of heart, in my Bible, I'm reading King James, after singleness of heart, there's a comma, not a period. The comma denotes the fact that the, the, the next paragraph is in direct connection with the subject that is brought about in verse number 46. So verse number 46 says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, comma. Look at this, praising God and the church and having favor with all the people. Now, they weren't just unified eating food. They were unified and praising God, and this gave them favor with the people. 
Do you want to know when God is going to send in individuals who don't know anything about his word? It is when we who are the church, we who are the body, get our unification together, praise God together, worship God together, not fight, not bicker, not argue. When we praise God together, we will have people who say, you know what? I want that experience. I want that jubilation. I want to feel that peace. And we're not praising God because we got it all together. Let me help you. Uh, some of the some of the times that that my praise was the most genuine was when I was going through the most hell. Yes, Lord. So, the, so the, 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 some of the times when my praise was the most intense was when the the most craziness was going on in my life. I wasn't praising God because I had it all together. I was praising God to keep from falling apart. I wish I had some witnesses that can understand that. Oh, I don't praise God because I have it all together. Sometimes I got to dance to keep from falling apart, to keep from coming unglued, to keep from losing uh, uh, what, 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 what mind that I have uh, regarding certain situations. They praised God. They were unified. Even if they had different things going on, they did not let that hamper them from praising God. And now let me go ahead and put this out there. I have heard, I have heard some say, well, you know, I can't praise God till the Holy Ghost move on me. I can't praise God until I said, no, no. If I see somebody in the house, pick them up and put them down, I'm going to dance until I feel something. <laughs> Glory to God. Because I don't know what they may be going. I don't know why they may be praising God, why they may be crying, why their hands may be lifted, why they may be speaking in, in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. Let me help you. When we are able to get back in the church and one person dance, everybody dance. If one person rock, everybody rock. Our, our, uh, my late presiding bishop, Bishop Stanley Halton, he used to say, dance, but if you can't dance, senior citizens just rock a little bit. And uh, some of y'all remember Bishop Halton used to say that. In other words, what he was saying was, get in the action. Get in the flow. Let's get on one accord. Let's get unified. Rejoice with them. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. All right? They praise God with singleness of heart. Praise God. They had favor. Now look at look at the end result because now here again in verse number 47, grammar. After people, there's a period. And look at after the period what it says. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Do y'all see that? And the Lord added daily to the church such as should be saved. But the only reason that the Lord had something to add was because the people were unified and they were one as Jesus desired for them to be. If we are going to see the next big revival, if we are going to see Pentecost at any cost, people of God, we have got to get to one. I'm going to keep on stabbing this and hitting this. We are seeing even now in this time of calamity, and I shared this with our saints the other day, we are even seeing now where people are turning their plate over collectively. We're, 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 I hate to say that, that we're in panic mode, but everybody's calling prayer lines and conference prayer calls and, and Facebook live prayers and, and YouTube streaming prayer. Everybody wants to pray now. They don't care the denominator. Let me help you understand something. Let me help you understand something real quick. If I'm in an accident, and I need, I need some blood. My blood is O positive. If I'm in an accident and I need some blood and my blood is O positive, I don't care who that blood come from. I'm not asking what is your denominational affiliation. I don't care if you AME, AME, Zion, Baptist, Kojic, Apostolic, Apostolic, Pentecostal, Hebrew, Pentecostal, Latter-day Saint, Lutheran, Methodist, Free Will Baptist, Foursquare Baptist, Southern Baptist, uh, Oneness Apostolic, Trinitarian Apostolic, Son of God Apostolic. I don't care about all of that because there is a need. What we are seeing now is we are seeing a conglomeration of what God desired where everybody's praying. 
Everybody's faster. I just saw the other day, and it, Lord have mercy, it wore me out. The governor of Louisiana, y'all look it up. The governor of Louisiana, as he was doing his state of the state address, uh, addressing what is going on with the pandemic in their region, he says every uh, Tuesday, every first Tuesday, he said, I, along with others, will be praying and fasting during the lunch hour. I, my head exploded. I say, God, is this what it took to get our attention to be on one accord if we get nothing else from this we don't need to lose this unity we don't need to lose this unification what is happening now and you can feel it in the spirit realm is now all of us are really understanding that it was never about the building it was never about our reformation it was about having the unity that Jesus desires that they may be one. That is what it's about. That they may be one. I'm going to say this to Jehovah Shammah. That we may be one. I'm going to say this to Global Empowerment Fellowship. That we may be one. To any other reformation, organization, local church. That we may be one. We may not all believe some of the same parts of doctrine. And even when you get into that, let me let me go ahead and touch that. Even when you get into that, you can say that, well, our beliefs are based on the Bible. Well, that's what everybody feels. But see, we're not even unified enough to come together and to discuss what was God saying? Who was God saying it to? And what context was he saying it? Uh -oh, how come he might have said something to the church at Corinth, but didn't say the same thing to the church at Thessalonica? Well, have we considered the fact that the epistles that Paul wrote were letters and were not a part of original scripture? Uh, you know, all of this biting and devouring and debating, God has knocked all of that out. <laughs> and he's brought us to a place where we can't help but be one. Glory to God. He has brought us to a realm where we call Shamaya. He has brought us to a place where we're all praying again. Everything is canceled. Uh, convention season, those of us who understand convention season starts uh, about the convention season goes from about June to about September. Convention season, bless God, is, is up under attack right now. So God has taken away everything that had the propensity to distract us and he put us in a place where you can't do nothing but call on me. How are you utilizing your time? How are you utilizing your time? Are you getting closer to God in this season? Are you determined? Will this, will this make you more unified when things get back to normal? Or will we get back to the bickering and the, and the fighting when, when, when church or the systems of church as we know it, when they come back into full fruition, will we go back to the ushers against the deacons and the deacons against the choir and the choir against the pastor? And will we go back to that or will we keep this momentum? I'm asking God to help us to keep this momentum. Um, uh, so so uh, them having a place of being with one accord is indicative of the miracles that begin to be wrought among them. Go to the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm about to tie this up here. Book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. 1 Corinthians um, chapter number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, the unity that Jesus desires, it is that we may be one. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, look at what Paul says to Corinth. He says, I'm in the King James Version, you can follow me whatever version you are in tonight. Paul says, moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. How that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Look at this. And did eat, 1 Corinthians 10 and 3. And did eat, and did all eat the same spiritual meat. <laughs> and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. 
if you call yourself a Christian, hear me good, Facebook land and YouTube land. If you call yourself a Christian, you cannot call yourself a Christian and operate in disunity. Huh. All right. Amen. My late, one of my late mentors, Bishop Speaks, he would say, Amen, Walls. You cannot call yourself a Christian if you operate and perpetuate disunity. I don't know if it's a word. I made it up. If it is, praise God. You, I, I'm not judging. I'm not, I, I'm not judging. I am not giving a false pretense. If you are always the person that is causing confusion and that is causing discord and that is causing a mass hysteria and you cannot get with the program and you're hard to deal with and you're hard to get along with, you are not a Christian. I said it because Christ's desire was that we may be one. The meat and the drink that is spiritual is operating in the unity of the faith of the Son of God, according to Ephesians 4 and 12 and 4 and 13. So when Paul says this in 1 Corinthians <laughs> uh, uh, chapter number 10, verse number 4, he says, they did all drink the same spiritual drink. What was that? The love. <laughs> love. For they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Verse number five. But with many of them was God not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, I don't want to get too lost into that point, but, but we understand the stories of Miriam and Aaron, how they came up against Moses, who was a type of Christ figure. Amen. He was a type of Christ figure uh, in the realm of a deliverer. He was a type of Christ figure. He was a shadow of what Christ would do. All right. Uh, Miriam and Aaron would come against Moses and, and the people had their own mind and Moses was trying his best to keep the people together and the people that he had on his right hand and on his left hand, they were so busy fighting him that the infighting from the top now spread to the people. This is why in a lot of our ministries, there are, you got to make sure that your assistant is not your assassin. Let me go ahead and say it again. You got to make sure that the people who are assisting you are not the same ones who are trying to assassinate you. As goes the head, goes the house. If, if the pastor can't trust the assistant and the associates and those who he or she have put into place to help the ministry as a whole, you're going to have a house of mass confusion and of mass hysteria. God overthrew them. Verse number six of 1 Corinthians 10. I'm talking about the unity that Jesus desires. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things. As they also lusted. As they, what, what are the evil things that they lusted after? When, when you are power hungry. Yes, Lord. When you are power hungry. Power hungry people love disunity because that gives them an opportunity to go put their claws into something or to somebody and draw influence away. When you read about David, David had a son by the name of Absalom who, who could not understand that his father was anointed. David was anointed to be king, but Absalom wanted to operate in a space and in a place that was not for him. So what did he do? He got with David's people who were not unified. And one of David's counselors, one of the prophets by the name of Ahithophel comes to David and says that Absalom has stolen the hearts of the people. So now David has to worry about confusion with his son, confusion in Israel, confusion within himself, confusion within his family. And if you want to keep, if you say you love your pastor or your leader, children, if you're watching, if you say you love your mother or love your father, but you constantly cause confusion and discord. You can't say you love me, but then you are part of the headache. Glory to God. You are, you are, you are a part of the headache and not the solution. If you want to help your pastor stay alive, get one mind of unity. 
If you want to help your, if you love your pastor so much, and oh, nobody better not say nothing bad about my pastor. If you want to keep the stress and the strain of ministry off of your leader, make a decision. I'm going to operate in unity. If you if you say you love your bishop or love your evangelist or or whatever uh, your denominational co, if you really love them, you won't cause confusion. As a matter of fact, you will make sure that there are certain things that don't even make it to the pastor's ear. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, when, when my pastor was living, there were certain things, things that he didn't even know about that I was doing because I didn't want it to even reach his ear. He had enough job trying to keep us fickle sheep from killing one another. So why would I, why would I say, uh, Bishop, we need toilet paper? Go to the store and buy it. The pastor shouldn't have to worry about certain things. If you are unified, you have the vision. If you are unified with your brother and your sister, if the house of God needs something, you are so unified with the house, watch this, and with the purpose of pushing the agenda of the house forward that you don't even get caught up in trivial things. Amen. Let me go ahead and keep on reading this. Now, I want to I want to I want to skip on down uh, to verse number uh, 32. Verse number 32 of Saint of 1 Corinthians 10. I'm, I got a, I got about 10 minutes. Uh, it says this. Give none offense. Neither to the Jews. Nor to the Gentiles. Nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things. Not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Let me read that again for you. First Corinthians 10, 32 and 33. Give not offense. Don't be so offensive. Neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men and all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. You know what Paul is saying here? Paul is saying, listen, there are a lot of things and a lot of ways that I can make sure <laughs> that y'all get real messed up. But I'm not seeking you to be unified for my own profit. I'm seeking for you to be unified that you might be saved, that you may be saved. The unity that Jesus desires for us is not because he knew we was going to like one another. It's not because he knew that we were going to agree in everything and that we were all uh, going to just skip out of business meetings and, and such and such like that. All having uh, uh, love, uh, all having, you know, the same clearly do. No, he said, I want you to be unified, not because you're going to agree with everything. I want you to be unified that you might be saved that you may be saved. Well, Bishop, why is this the point? This is the point because while you're biting and while you're operating in discord and while you're operating in disunity, the devil, Satan, is still going about as a roaring lion, seeing who he may, seeking whom he may devour. So while you're going back and forth, operating in another spirit, the enemy is having free reign and free course. How it is, how it is, how I like to describe it is, I call it death by implosion. If you're writing, write that down. Death by implosion. What that simply means is the way that the enemy destroys us the greatest is by allowing us to explode from the inside out. Explosion is out destruction from the outside in. Implosion is destruction from the inside out. And so if 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 the nucleus, if the core, if if the middle part is destructive and destroying and biting and devouring, then after a while it's going to spread onto the outward thing. And now you have a place where can't nobody be saved because the ones who have been charged with being unified, help me, Holy Ghost, the ones who have been charged with being unified are not operating in the realm that Jesus desires. And why would God cause a sinner to come into confusion and stamp his approval on it? 
I am so convinced that there are so many of us, God help us, that there are so many of us who are bringing embarrassment to the glory of God because the world is looking at our discord and looking at how we act and we're supposed to have the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to have the spirit of God. The Holy Ghost all by itself is a unifying spirit. Let me give you another scripture to, to, to tie down uh, some of what I'm saying, because I think I think that and, and please know I'm not fussing. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get us to a place to understand the importance of one mind It's more than just wearing the same color It's more than just saying that we're all going to eat chicken on men's day. No, it, that, that stuff is trivial. That stuff is trivial. I'm talking about the big things. I'm talking about being able to operate in a realm of the spirit where I'm so unified with my brother or my sister that my discernment will let me know if something is going on with them. Yes, Lord. I, I want to get to a place I want to get to a place where if my brother or my sister is going through that I can that I I, I can feel them that I, I can I can feel them so that I can go and minister to their place of need but if I'm spending all of my time thinking about how I don't like them and how they this and how they that how can I be unified how can I stop the devil in his tracks if I'm focused on my own agenda, I want you to I want you to uh, uh, stay in first Corinthians. Go to the first chapter. First Corinthians chapter number one. Y'all pray for me in these allergies, but I believe God. First Corinthians chapter number one. Look at what Apostle Paul says. <laughs> one in ten. He says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. God, Jesus, and them, why is this so difficult? <laughs> this is difficult. Let me go ahead and say it. This is difficult. Because somebody really ain't saved. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. This is difficult because somebody really ain't saved. Somebody who cannot operate in this realm is professing but not possessing. How, how can I say that? How can I say that? My, my late pastor, Bishop Bethea, used to always say, he used to say, saints, I don't see what I'm reading. In other words, if there are fruits that come along with the spirit of God and you don't have no fruits being manifested, how can you say that you belong to God? If you don't have no evidence that manifests the inward presence of God, see, we, we love harping on tongues. Let me help somebody understand that. One of our sisters had, 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 had a, a question about, about tongues. And, and here's, here's what I got to say about that. Tongues are the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. The initial, the, the first evidence of the Holy Ghost is tongues. But let me help you understand this. Tongues are the initial evidence, but they're not the only evidence. Glory be to God. The initial evidence of the Holy Spirit, according to the scripture, is speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, according to Acts chapter number 2 and 4. But the absolute evidence of the Holy Ghost is when you have the fruit, not fruits, not plural, when you have and when you operate in the fruit of the Spirit. So when you operate in the fruit of the spirit, we don't have to worry about you being mean and nasty and cantankerous. Truly saved people are sweet people. Don't mean we punks. It don't mean we soft. But what it means is that there are parts of our nature that we don't even want to exercise. It's parts of Jamine Oliver that I want. I just want him to just burn up and die. I want more patience. I want more love. I want more temperance. I want more understanding. I want more grace. I want to be able to show more mercy. Somewhere along the line, we begin 
operating in a place where those who were not saved begin to feel comfortable and I don't have to follow you home. All I got to do is look at your fruit. If it's not matching up with the word of God, I'm not judging you. I'm not holding you uh, in contempt. I'm not holding you uh, by your neck. The word of God judges. The word of God lets me know where you are and where you are not. As a pastor, that's why everybody can't be a pastor. The, the only difference that a pastor has is a pastor has a higher anointing. Doesn't make him or her better. They just have a higher anointing to be led by God. Let me help you understand this, beloved. When you get to a place and to a space where you can truly begin walking in the fruit of the Spirit, unity will not be a challenge. God help me tonight. Unity will not be you, you will it will not be a challenge for you to dwell in unity if you have the fruit, if you have the hook. It will not be a challenge for you to operate in unity. Uh, Psalm 133 and 1, which is our monthly focus for this month. Psalm 133 and 1. Behold how good and how pleasant. Glory to God. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. When we see brethren, that encompasses the sisters as well. All right. It's good and it's pleasant when unity is the order of the day. Everybody walks out smiling. Everybody walks out happy. Everybody walks out being fulfilled because they're understanding that it's not about me. It's not about me. God, I want you to get so much glory that that I don't even count myself. I just want to go along with what is going on so that God, you will get the maximum glory. This is what this is what this is what Paul is saying all throughout the book of 1 Corinthians. I got four minutes all throughout the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. It is about unity and unifying being with one mind. This beloved is the unity that Jesus desires for us to be one. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God. Father of all, above us all, through us all, in us all. I cut you, you bleed red. You cut me, I bleed red. You slap me, I hurt. I slap you, you hurt. There's but one flesh of man. I want to end with this. I want to end with this. If we are going to heaven, it's time for us to get unified down here on the earth. Glory be to God. There is no, there is no, well, when I get over there, I'm going to get all it. No, no. This earth is the practicing forum. Earth is the practicing faith. I, I, I got to say this because uh, it is my it is my affiliation and it is uh, my, my doctrinal uh, thought process. If the apostolic church and organizations don't get this fellowship and stuff together, we are going to be lost. Because how is it that you say you got all of this power but you won't even talk to your brother or talk to your sister because they have a difference of opinion. How in the world are we going to impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ and we can't stand one another because something somebody misinterpreted some years ago? And I, I'm not even I'm not even talking about thank you Lord I'm not even talking about necessarily uh, 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 doctrinal indifferences because one thing I found out is I have been with brothers that believe the same exact thing and still can't get it together. Somewhere you know I learned a, I learned a, uh, I learned a phrase the other day <laughs> I learned a phrase the other day they could they said you know a lot of people operate in a lot of people operate in first class flesh. First class flesh. And what has happened? We we had we used to have awesome fellowships and awesome conferences and awesome conventions and the people love one another and we came together with camaraderie. But what happened? The bishop board couldn't get it together. <laughs> The leaders who we were looking for couldn't give it couldn't get it together. And then after a while they said, Well, we ain't going over there no more. 
before they were our brothers and sisters. Then after they had an agreement, a disagreement, or some type of confuffle, confuffle, then it became over there. We ain't going over there no more. We ain't going over there no more. We ain't doing that no more. We ain't going to fellowship with them no more. God help us. We are not operating in the unity that Jesus desires. He said that they may be one in righteousness, in holiness, one in the, in, the, in the understanding of who Jesus is, one in the understanding of what he came to do. The gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now where we're living, we're living in a, we're living in a time now to where now, <laughs> I told our sister tonight, I said now Easter, Easter is under, uh, under, under scrutiny now. Uh, amen. Not resurrection, but, but what we call Easter. What are we going to do? What are we going to do, church? What are we going to do, those who are watching? Unity starts with you. Unity starts with you. Unity starts with you. First thing you got to do is get your mind right. <laughs> That's the first thing you got to get your mind right. You cannot bring unity into groups. You cannot bring unity into conclaves. You cannot bring unity into, into mass persons if you don't like you. Some of us need to get unified with us again. And some of us need to figure out what exactly, who am I? You need to start getting unified with yourself, bringing yourself to, to your, looking at you, laying your own self on the couch. Ain't nothing wrong with you. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with you. You need to lay your own self down on the couch and find out what your attitude problem is. How come you get an attitude so quick? How come you, how come you so quick to, to be off the cuff and, and, to, and to treat people quick? What, what is it, what is it in you? What is it in you? And when you begin getting unified within yourself, then you can begin asking God, how do you want me to handle my brother? How do you want me to handle my sister? God, increase my discernment. God, increase my love. God, God, God increase my space of grace. That's, that's my prayer right now. I need my grace, my, my space of grace increased because, because you know, uh, anybody that knew my mother, my mother had a short fuse. She had a real short fuse. And once she was done with you, she was done. And I picked that up hereditarily. I'm asking God, even at 34 years old, I'm asking God to change that even with me. Let me not be so quick to write people off. Give me wisdom. Yes, Lord. Give me wisdom so that, so that I don't get comfortable with toxic people. But God, give me a space of grace. So that I don't devour and divide. So that I'm not a proponent of divisions. Oh, Jeremiah 20 is coming to me. 20, 23. Woe be unto the pastors that scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. I don't want to be part of that group. I want to operate in the unity that Jesus desires. All right, y'all. My time is up. Heaven smile upon you give you peace. Father, I thank you. I give you praise now for the opportunity to share your word. I pray, oh Lord, that someone received tonight that there uh, was a challenge that was given that Lord God may be uh, effectuated in the minds of your people. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would begin shifting us and shaping us that we might, Lord God, begin operating in the unity that you desired for us, Jesus that we may be one, one in our families, one with our brothers and our sisters, one even in our own mind. Father, I pray for peace tonight. I pray for your strength to be our strength, for your joy to be our joy, for your peace to be our peace, for your love to be our love. Show us how to love, Lord. Hallelujah. And in the areas where we're lacking, Lord God, give us the tools and, and equip us with understanding, Father, that we may examine ourselves to see whether or not we're in the faith. Father, bless all of those who have been affected by this pandemic, by this plague. Father, touch, Lord, right now, my uncle, in Jesus' name. Ah, hallelujah. I thank you for the miracle that you're even working right now. I call you, I call on the wonder of the blood right now. Thank you for the wonder working power that is in the blood of Jesus. All of those who may have, those who are affected by unemployment right now, oh God, open a door, make a way, send provision that we know not of in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Let your word go forth with power, with authority. Bless every pastor, every leader, Lord God. Father, strengthen us and give us intuitiveness and, and give us innovation that we may get this word over to your people. Then, then, Father, bless your people that they may open your word and hide that word in their hearts that they may not sin against you. I give you praise for that single mother right now, Lord God, who may not even be able to see a way, Lord God, you be a door of provision. I praise you right now for the ways that are already made. Hallelujah. I praise you right now, Lord God, for the doors that are already open. Thank you for signs, miracles, and wonders. You told us in your word that these signs should follow them that believe. And tonight, oh God, we declare that we believe, but help thou our unbelief to where when we walk by, Lord God, that people will know that we belong to you, that you reside in us. Make us the church. Make us the body that you desire for us to be. We bind and rebuke sickness, illness, infirmity, and disease. We cast it back to the pit from which it came. But Father, if it is in our lives, show us what you would have us to know, even through our calamity, even through our sicknesses, even, Lord God, through our ailments. Father, give us a mind to declare that we will bless you at all times that your praise would be in our mouths. Father, bless those here, there, and everywhere. Father, every country, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the whole world is in your hand. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the worlds, and they that dwell therein. Help us to know, oh God, that you are in control, that you are sovereign, that there is not a question you don't have the answer to. Lord God, that there is not a problem that you don't have the solution to. Father, help us to depend on you again. Help us not to look unto ourselves. Help us not to be wise in our own conceits, but Father in Jesus' name, Lord God, help our faith to be increased, that we may please you. Father, give us a mind to want to be unified. Give us a mind to love you, to love your word, to love your law, to love your truth, to love one another as you have loved us. Father, I pray right now for every member of our church, every member of every house of worship, Lord God, keep their hearts encouraged in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay the hand of death. Stay the hand of the devourer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, those with uh, compromised immune systems, send healing right now. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge and understanding. Father, that we may not deal foolishly or ignorantly, but Father, keep us right now from danger seen and unseen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against panic. I come against fear. We declare right now that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. We declare right now that healing is the children's bread in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we invoke the blood of Jesus right now over our heads over our homes over our dwelling places in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare right now that even in the midst of this financial calamity we declare that we are a recession proof people father every tithe giver right now you told us that you would rebuke the devourer for our sake father I come against systems slow pain systems right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I speak miracle money in Jesus name. I speak money that is coming from the east, the west, the north, and the south. That every provision that we have, hallelujah, will be provided that we shall have no lack. We are blessed. We are wealthy. We are prosperous. Father, we call right now on every seed that we have sown. We call on that seed right now to be made reciprocated in our lives in the name of Jesus. I decree right now in Jesus name Lord checks that have been held up that they would be released by the power of God in the name of Jesus Father release it to us and make us good stewards over what you have given to us in the name of Jesus I go into hospitals right now Father bless first responders bless doctors and nurses Lord God chaplains and social workers Lord God all of those who are in the healthcare industry keep their bodies healed right now in Jesus name Father, bless the bereaved families who have lost loved ones because of this calamity. Father, let this not draw us back from your word, but let this push us further to your word as we come together, Lord God, as one collective body calling on you today, oh God, for no other help we know. We stretch our hands to you, hallelujah. We stretch our hands to you. We turn from our wicked ways. You told us in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways you told us in your word that you would hear hear from heaven 
children. You would forgive us our sin. You would heal our land. We stand right now, right now on Psalm 23, that the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. In the name of Jesus Christ, you restore our soul. Thank you right now. Whoever we're in intercession for tonight, back trouble and stomach trouble, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus come in your belly right now, in your abdomen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now that we are victorious in the name of Jesus. Say to Lucia Holt. Hey, glory to God. Say to Lucia Holt, you foul spirit. I come against you, you constricting spirit. Lucia Holt right now. Uh, I send Michael the archangel in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, come on with the sword uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, fight for us. Uh, we plead the blood right now. Hallelujah. Thank you right now for delivering power. Thank you right now for saving power. I thank you right now that somebody, Lord God, uh, is being turned back to you. I thank you right now, Lord, uh, that somebody, somebody's life uh, is changing, oh God, uh, to where we cannot trust uh, in the things that we see. We give you back your word, oh God, uh, that you declared uh, that you shall supply all of our needs uh, according to your riches and glory. For some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God, uh, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. We thank you right now for having the righteous name of Jesus. We thank you for being the people of the name tonight, uh, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father we stand in concert right now with healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ turn the nations back to you turn our hearts back to you turn our eyes back to you and make us a bride that is ready make us a church that is ready make us people who are ready I feel it right now in the name of Jesus those who are suffering right now from stomach ailments, uh, ulcers right now I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I come against gastrointestinal reflux disease, uh, Satan the Lord rebuke you now in Jesus name uh, I come against abdomen cramps uh, in the name of G, the Lord heal you now, hallelujah, in the name of G, back trouble, Lord God stretch out your mighty hand, let your blood cover right now, oh God uh, shake us by your spirit, Lord God help us to know that you rule in the kingdom of men. Help us to know oh God uh, that it is you that we live and that we move. It is in you. We live, move, and have our being. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I rebuke back trouble right now. In Jesus thank you Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. Right now, Satan, your hold is loose. Uh, I command you under arrest. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, your people are blessed. Uh, your people are made ever with whole. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I call down fevers. Uh, right now, in Jesus name, uh, I call down fevers. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I call down high blood pressure. Satan, have your hold. Be loosed up. In the name of Jesus, God, you are exalted. Satan, you are defeated. We thank you right now for the power in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now that we have authority to call those things that are not as though they even are even right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise, oh God. We give you glory right now. We lift up your name. We honor you among the heathen. We we will declare that you are Lord. We will declare that you reign. We will declare that you're sovereign. We will declare that you rule. We will declare that there's nothing too hard for you. We will declare your generation today in the name of Jesus Christ. When men's hearts are failing them for fear, Lord God, give us a boldness right now to declare to the heathen that God is the king, that Christ rules, that the Holy Ghost reigns in the name of Jesus. Lord God, make us who you would have us to be. Lord God, let us love one another as you have loved us and we come from this place and we come from this time giving you the glory Lord God giving you the honor bless those in authority yes Lord bless our president Lord God bless his cabinet right now Lord God bless all of those who are in charge of the affairs Lord God of this country but at the end of the day Lord God help us to know that it is in you that the government shoulders upon that it is on you that rest all kings and princes in the name of the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Bless our mayor, Lord God. Bless our governor, Lord God. All of those who are making decisions in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, you guide them. Let your hand
hand be in it. Let your hand be upon it. And Lord God, those who are praying, those who are crying out to you, hear our prayer, oh God. Attend, oh God, unto our ears. And Lord God, for the one whose heart is even overwhelmed right now, I speak a spirit of encouragement into their spirit right now. You shall make it. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror through him that love us. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Woman be encouraged. Man be encouraged. God has not forgotten you. Hallelujah to God. Be encouraged in your mind. You will not lose it. You will not go crazy. In the name of Jesus, I speak stability of your mind. Even right now, I speak to that marriage of under attack. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. I bind silent treatment. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will speak again. In Jesus' name, restore the love, O oh God. Let your word, O oh God, be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our pathway. I give you praise right now, O oh God, that you are working a work even in the body of Christ. Lord God, when you've gotten rid of every distraction, you brought us back to prayer. You brought us back to fasting. You brought us back to intercession. You brought us back to wailing. You brought us back to weeping, O oh God. And I give you praise for the reminder. Hold not your hand away from us. Hold back the night oh God. Hold not your hand away from us in the name of Jesus but stretch out your mighty hand for you declared in your word that your hand is not so short your arm is not so short that it cannot save. Help us right now oh God to be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Lord God that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Help us to be the sacrifice tonight in the name of Jesus help us Lord God to do what you have called us to do what Without fear or doubting, lifting up holy hands in the name of Jesus. Help us to be the ones, Lord God, that you're calling for to declare your word without compromise, without backing up, without backing down. Let us declare, Lord God, from the hilltop to the valley low that you are God and beside you there is no other. In the name of Jesus Christ, make us a glorious people who you have called out of darkness into your marvelous light. Give us an encouragement in our minds uh, that after all this is over, uh, Lord God, that we may be uh, who you have called us to be. Uh, let us not be weary in well-doing, uh, for in due season uh, we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, let us not be bewitched uh, by what we see, uh, for we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Uh, Father, give us a mind uh, to say yes to you. Uh, yes in the morning and the evening. Uh, yes all day long. Uh, even in the midst of this calamity, uh, let us still say yes to you uh, and we will go from this place, uh, giving you the glory, uh, honoring your name, uh, for you reign, O oh God. Uh, you reign above all. Uh, you reign above every name. Uh, for at the name of Jesus, uh, we declare that every demon uh, will come subject uh, to the authority of the name. Uh, and we decree right now uh, that we shall be uh, a victorious people uh, for your name's sake uh, and for your glory reigning. Uh, I give you praise right now uh, in Jesus' name. And for his name's sake, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Until we meet next time, y'all. Y'all take care. Hallelujah. Stay safe. Wash. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wash. Huh. Watch and pray. Let God be God in your lives. Don't fear. Don't trip. Don't spaz out. God is in control. God has everything covered. All right? Don't lose it. God got you. Y'all take care. Till next time.